Is Kevin Senior a trash bag and is the sisters just as dirty and low down as he may be? Let's get into the review, y'all. And what's going on, you guys? This is your boy, Scotty by Nature TV, and we're here for a brand new episode of Yes, Not nah, Yes for the Mess. We're here for a brand new review of the Braxton's, honey. I'm so used to saying Yes for the Mess, y'all. That's because I've been doing a whole lot of Yes for the Mess videos uh, for the last couple of months because we ain't had a lot of reality TV to really review right now. But we got some mess to review right now. We're here for another review today of the Braxton Season 1, Episodes 3 and 4, y'all. We are back in the building today. And after this, I'm going to go take a shower, I'm going to get dressed, and I'm going to call my mama while I take my walk and stuff like that. But shout out to everybody. Y'all are steady blessing me today. Um, I'm so thankful for my tribe, my Scotty gang, just everybody that supports me. I'm really thankful to you guys, okay? Just thank you guys. I did not ask for any cash apps. I did not ask for any PayPals, and I got them from you guys. And I really appreciate that. I really do, like, for real. Y'all don't know. I... Y'all got me right here, and I got y'all right here. I really appreciate that, y'all, okay? But anyways, um, be sure to look out for uh, my live review later on tonight of Love & Hip Hop Atlanta. I go live right after the show at 9 o'clock p.m., so make sure you guys tune in to that. And then tomorrow, we have an interview on the prelude with Chef Pablo, honey. And we will be going live at 8 p.m. Eastern time, so make sure you guys get into it, all right? So with that being said, you guys, that's pretty much all that we got. So let's go ahead and get into the Braxton's episodes three and four. All right, let's get into it. Now, here are my notes from my phone, y'all, as you all know, already know. So we're going to start it off with Trina, Tawanda, and Miss E. They meet up for lunch, and while they're sitting at the table, Tawanda gets a phone call from Lil Kevin, and Lil Kevin is basically calling from jail. Um, they don't, you know, it's basically about the warrant and, you know, Tawanda really not going into the full details about what actually is going down with Lil Kevin. All she knows is that the charges are having something to do with something that happened within his marriage. I think that's what she said. And, you know, by her saying that, well, you know, um, it, you know, her, you know, when, without getting really into this whole situation, we do know that um charges um have something to do with you know what's going on between him and his wife. Okay, so what exactly is going on, and what are y'all not telling us? You know what I mean? So yeah, that's the thing that got me crazy and wondering. Like, does it have you know? Because when you say stuff like that, it's like okay, so what's really going on then? Like, like what's really going on? What are we talking about? What are we dealing with? Like, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, but you know, because they ain't really telling the shit. So anyway, after the phone call, um, you know, Miss E is worried about um worried about little Kevin, but um they are all um praying for him and hoping that things go in a better direction for him at this point. So then uh, we get into um Trina. Tawanda says that Trina should see spirit every week for her grief counseling. And um, Tawanda was like, I'm not being funny or nothing like that. Like, I'm really being serious. And, you know, Trina was like, well, I didn't take it no kind of way. I actually agree with you with you saying that I need to go and see, you know, spirit every week. Because I probably do need to go see spirit, you know. Um, it's probably best that I do. And it is best that you do. I think that it's good for someone to go and see a grief counselor. As I said on the last review, like, I ain't been a therapist since 2019. And I feel like I need to go back. And not do I need to go back for other issues, but I've lost a lot of people over the last few years. Like I've lost so many people. I haven't had no time to grieve over these people because every time I lose one person, a couple of months later, I lose somebody else. So it's just like, okay, what, what gives? What do I do? You know what I mean? And the only thing that I know how to do to cope with my losses is to throw myself into work. And sometimes that don't even help. So yes, I do agree with Tawanda saying that Trina need to go see Spirit every week. Evelyn Dean says, Tracy asked you guys to get along when she was sick in her last days. She asked all you girls to get along and y'all are not honoring her at all. Y'all act like y'all hate each other. 
You know what I mean? And it's and it's just like I don't know what else to say. And you know, Evelyn being a mom, you know what I'm saying? She wants to um she wants to make sure that she wants her daughters to get along. And you know, my mama the same way. You know, my mama want all three of her kids to get along. You know, I'm only close to my baby brother. Not necessarily with my sister, but I'm very close to my baby brother. But she wants all of us to be close because she grew up watching her aunts and her uncles bicker, not being cool, everybody beefing with one another. You know, that's what they did back in those days. And they still do it now. And it comes down to the kids and it festers and it continues. And that's just the, that's just the gist of that. So she wants her children to get along. But Tawanda's question is, are we really not getting along or are we still grieving over our sister? You know, all of us have been grieved and um, we all grieve in different ways. So who who's to say that we're at odds? We may not, we may just still be grieving over our sister. And sometimes with death and grieving, you know, sometimes that come between certain relationships. So we really don't know what the case may be with them. Who knows? So then we get into Tony. She meets with her manager and her music director. They discuss the show. They're talking about the fact that she hasn't performed in like four years and she wants everything to be right. You know, she knows that, you know, she got this heart issue and all those things. And her manager said her health is hard to navigate, you know, but I'm not going to put too much on Tony because she already got enough going on with her health. So I'm not going to put too much on her, but her health is always going to come first to me. I know that Tony want to work. I know Tony want to do this thing. I know Tony wants to do that. But at the same time, her health is way more important to me than a show. And I agree. Her health is way more important than a show. And she needs to focus more so on making sure that she's good because we already be seeing um, t Boss from TLC. We already know that she deals with her um, sickle cell anemia and she's always um, finding herself being sick and having to cancel shows and stuff like that. And she's even at the point to where what, what she said on um, the Breakfast Club the other day is that she's ready to retire at this point because she doesn't want to keep putting her body through the drama and the, and, and the stuff that they got going on, that her body has going on. It can make her sicker. So she don't want to deal with that no more. So I definitely understand that. So then we get into Tamar and Evelyn. You know, they meet up. You know, apparently they got a cooking show coming out um, and they're very happy about that. And Tamar says that this is her favorite project outside of her book that she's done so far. They discuss Tamar's book. You know, Tamar's talking about her whole life, everything from Vince to what was going on in her own personal thing with her mental health. She's talking about everything. She's putting it all out on the line and all that. So she's being completely honest in her book about her life. I ain't buying the book, but for those of you that are Tate Martians, go buy the book. Anyway, um, she says that she should always be in therapy. But yet, when they asked her to do the grief therapy, she said, oh, I already been. Which one is it? See, this is why I don't like Tamar. Because she say one thing, and then do another thing. Like, girl, which one is it? Like, wh like what what we doing? What you talking about? Like, what's going on? So then um, we get into Tony. Um, she's going through her rehearsal. She's rehearsing for the show. And then um, T um, Tawanda FaceTimes her. And then Tawanda informs her about the little Kevin situation and that they're all going to D.C., to check in on little Kevin, right? So that is when Tony was like, well, you know, I can't travel. I wish I could, but with my lupus, I just flew back in from Atlanta. That was just a couple of days ago. So I can't be on a flight. I can't travel that much. It's not good for my health and all that other stuff. And I can honestly say that I feel bad for Tony. Because, you know, I, I'm always, you know, I know a lot of the times we take our health for granted, you know, when we all into good health and things like that, we take it for granted. And I can honestly say that I'm thankful for that because, you know, as you all know, I've recently moved to Atlanta. I'm like 600 miles away from, what is it, 600 or 300, maybe 300 miles, but six hours away from my family. Um, and I'm living here in Atlanta now and it's only been three days. And I, you know, after this video, I got to go, I got to go call my mama. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't imagine not being able to hop on a plane and fly 45 minutes to go see my mama and my family. If something is going on with them, you know, I can't imagine not being able to do that for the sake of my health. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's kind of unfortunate, but that's the cards that she's been dealt. Um, 
you know, Tawana tells Tony that Trina is going to continue on with grief therapy, as she should. I agree that she should. Um, Tony says that she needs therapy, but she's not really certain if that's what she really wants to do at this particular moment. You know what I'm saying? Um, then we're going to go ahead and get into um, Tamar and Evelyn. They're not doing anything but, you know, filming the cooking show. They're having a good time trading stories and things like that. And then by the end of the film, you know, Trina came in and um, she was pretty much... You know, giving them a little bit of comedy in a sense. You feel what I'm saying? Which is what they do. Just to let y'all know, this review might be a tad bit shorter than the very first one because it wasn't a lot that went on on this particular episode, on these two episodes. So then we get into Trina. Um, She's at the counseling session. Um, Spirit basically says that she needs to focus on getting sleep and controlling her thoughts because those things contribute to her mental health. Um... She said that when she lost Gabe, she was punished for grieving him by Vaughn. And she said that he wasn't really there for her during that situation because he felt like this. I'm not going to be sitting here watching you grieving over another dude. And she was like, it's not just another dude. This is someone that was in my life for 16 years. He helped take care of my kids. Like it's this more than just some man that I used to back in the day like he was literally a part of my family like my family loved him in their own way he loved them like it's more to it than that and i agree with trina like if you can't like if you can't see that you're putting her in a bad place like basically trying to give her some kind of ultimatum like she cannot grieve over her ex-husband of 16 years then you're crazy like why would you be jealous or envious over a dead ass man no disrespect but why would you do that and you know that you know, she spent all these years with this man and things like that. But um, I just, I don't know. I just, I just feel like he was being selfish with that situation. You see your woman going through this. Like, you don't think that she would hurt over this situation. Like, they were able to get past the humps that they went through. And they were still able to be cool by the time that he died. So, of course, she's going to grieve and cry about it. She spent a, a big chunk of her life with this man. And so did her damn kids. Are you serious? Come on now, Vaughn. That pissed me off. Um, she said Gabe would visit her in her sleep, and then Tracy does too. Then Spirit asked uh, Trina, so would it be a situation where you would prefer that they don't visit you in, their, in your sleep? And then she's like, absolutely. It does. It does. That's one of the things that um, that's one of the things that bothers me. Like, I can't really fully grasp anything because they're always visiting me and i would love it if they would just leave me the hell alone let me move forward let me try to grieve y'all the right way but y'all keep on visiting me in my dreams and it's making it hard for me i agree i understand that um my cousin tail who i was very close to he would visit me in my dream sometime at the very beginning of, of his passing and it would really put me in a bad place like i'd be like oh my god and then it will hurt me even more when I wake up and he's still not here. You feel what I'm saying? So, yes, girl, I get you. Um, She says that seeing Tracy when she closed her eyes makes her sad and makes her fearful. Her and her sisters never embraced each other the way they should have when Tracy was alive. And even now, they're still not embracing each other as they should now. And that's a big issue. That means there's been like rips and things like that from the very beginning. You know what I mean? From the very jump, from the very beginning, there's been rips, there's been, you know, cracks in the foundation, and they haven't found the right formula or the right rhyme or reason to really fix those cracks in their relationship. And I can only imagine how that is. Um, so then Trina and Vaughn, um, uh, she comes home, she talks about little Kevin. Vaughn confronts Trina about her about her session. He feels like she does a lot of deflecting when she doesn't want to talk about stuff. Then they discuss Tony and her illness and how Tony need, needs to, you know, figure some things out with her own self and start worrying about everybody else and really just focus and hang in on her health. And I agree with that. Tony been trying to perform for a long time, even after they told her that she would probably never perform, you know, anymore the same way that she used to and she still tries. You know what I'm saying? So it's just... No, you know, girl, focus on your health, focus on what you need to do. Cause I remember when my mama hurt herself and she still tried to work at the post office, retire, 
I know it's going to be hard to let go of that seventy-five to $80,000 a year. I understand that's a lot of money, but that's a good money for you. But girl, you got two degrees. You can find some in your field. Let it go. <laughs> okay, let it go. That's how I felt with my with my mother. Like, girl, let it go. Stop hurting yourself more than what you already have. Um. So, Tawana been trying to call Kevin. She ain't getting no answer. Production finally tracks him down. Kevin ain't got no phone, so he got to get a phone. So, Trina, Tawanda, Sean, and Vaughn they arrive in DC. Okay, Tony and Trina. Trina updates Tony on everything that's been going on with Kevin. And Tony said, I think that we should talk to his dad. And then um, Tony was like, how do you feel about talking to Kevin? She was like, look, I don't want to talk to him, you know. And Tony was like, I under, you know, there's been a lot of stuff that happened publicly. Um, you know, asking, you know. You know, there's been some things that happened with them publicly as far as like the dispute over Tracy and the memorial and the funeral and stuff like that. There were things that happened. It was a breakdown with the family publicly. And a lot of them really don't want to have nothing to do with Kevin at this particular moment. Right. So everybody's pissed at him. Don't nobody really want to talk to him. And, you know, Tony is really the only one that is willing to talk to him at this particular moment now. Like she's the only one that's willing to have a conversation, willing to talk and stuff like that. You know, she's the mature one out of the bunch because don't nobody else really want to talk to him. So it's kind of like, OK, you know, I'll do it. But but Trina, she don't want to talk to Kevin Sr. So then um, Trina, Vaughn, Tawanda and Sean. They go go kart riding, and then Trina asked Sean about marriage. She said, "Now, when we last filmed Breaks of Family Values, you came to my daddy, and you asked my daddy for my sister's hand in marriage. Now, why would you ask her for her hand in marriage, and you never had any intentions on marrying her in the first place?" And then he was like, "Ain't that?" And then you know, Tawanda says she is never finna sit up here and force no man to marry her because it never works out that way when you try to force a man to do something. So she ain't finna force no man to do a damn thing. That's what Tawanda said. And I understand that. I ain't forcing no man to put no ring on my finger either. Okay? And that's on period. And don't nobody need to force me to put one on theirs. So then um, Tamar does a podcast interview um, on um, We Sound Crazy podcast. Love that podcast. Don't care about this scene. Moving on. Um, They have the family dinner. And um, they have the family dinner in D.C. Daddy questioned Sean about marrying Tawanda. And um, he said, I got my own little plan. I know what I'm going to do. And you're going to be the first one to know. And then Daddy Braxton was like, well, I don't need to be the first one to know. You know, you need to figure that out on your own. Tawanda need to be the first one to know. And they laugh about it. So Kevin arrives. Mikey and little Mikey shows up. And then Kevin asks, how's everyone been since Trina, uh, since Tracy passed? Tawanda says that she'd be like, sometimes I'd be like, damn, she's not here. And then daddy said he would, he would get phone calls from Tracy every single morning. And that, that was the way he lived his life. He knew that he was going to get a phone call from Tracy. Every time he woke up, he knew he was going to get a phone call. But now, you know, it's kind of like, I, I miss that. I miss her. I miss all those things. Right. So then after that, um, you know, Little Mikey says to Kevin, what can we do for you as a family? Like, what exactly can we do to help you as a family? And Kevin was like, well, I don't really be coming to my family unless it's an emergency. Like, I don't really like to contact y'all unless it's an um, emergency or whatever. So then after that, that's when um, Tr Trina was like, well, it shouldn't have to take an emergency for you to reach out. Like even when you're at your best, we still need to know that you are at your best and we still need for you to reach out to us when you are at your best. We don't need to just hear from you when it's an emergency, like reach out, let us know what's going on. I agree. It should never be a situation where I'm only hearing from you when there's an emergency. That's not that's not fair to everybody else. We're all checking in. We're worried about you. We need to know what's going on, y'all. We just need to know. Um, Kevin says, well, I be, I be wanting to figure things out on my own. And I get that you want to figure things out on your own. But sometimes there's nothing wrong with coming to your family if you know you got a family that's going to back you and be there for you when you're going through stuff. So, yeah, I get that. Um... So then we get into, um, let's see where we at. So then um, Kevin shares that he's going through a divorce. He's dealing with that right now. 
And then daddy asked him about what's going on with his relationship with Kevin Sr. He said that he they're not speaking. He's confused about the will. And, you know, there's a lot of things that transpired with Tracy that he didn't really know about. And he don't understand why his dad is mad at him. And he's confused about everything with the will. And then Trina said, everything that happened, everything that Tracy left here, she did not leave it to us. She left it to you. You are her only son. That's who she left it to. That's that's the thing. That's what she left it to. And I believe that. So then after that, um, Kevin says that he doesn't know where he stands in his dad's life at this point. And that's a sad thing to be like. For you not to know where you stand with your own daddy, that's a lot. Um, so then Tamar, she's working out. She's nervous about her new album dropping. We don't care. Um, she's talking about her new book and, and talking about Vince and her baby, why she ain't with Vince no more, why they didn't make it, all those things, right? So, yeah, I guess that's good. So then, um, Trina and Kevin, they meet with the family lawyer. They discuss Tracy's wishes. Um, Antavius told them everything that they needed to know. He said that he recorded Tracy. Tracy said that everything that she left was for her. And they don't know why Kevin feel, is feeling the need to get himself involved and jump into this situation. And Kevin said, I, you were married into this family. I was born into this. I didn't ask to be here. So at this point, I need to know what's really going on. So then after the conversation, after the meetup, you know, Trina, Tawanda, Vaughn, and Sean, they all come together. Tawanda and Sean arrive at the rental. They discuss Tracy's decisions and everything that she had. And then Tawanda says that um, Kevin Sr. is mad because Tracy didn't choose him. Like, you know, that's your own son. You should never do that to your son or whatever. That's your own child. Why would you put your son in that situation? And so Trina said it gets better. Production wanted Kevin Sr. to film with Kev, little Kevin and his dad. And she said that I really don't want to give him a platform to do anything. And then that's when Tawana confronts production about everything. And she says that why would you guys think that that would be a good idea for y'all to put Kevin on this show? I'm not giving Kevin a platform to do nothing. I never want him to get any shine off our platform ever again. And I mean that. And then this goes into to be continued. Here's my thing with that, Okay. Um, girl, I feel like this. Kevin Sr. is wrong. He's wrong as two left shoes for what he's putting his son through. I definitely agree with that. I understand that. I understand why everybody's pissed about it, like for real. But you motherfuckers ain't right either. Because if y'all gonna sit up there and talk about him all the time, give him the spot to tell his side of the story. He'd been on the show before. He's married into this so-called family of y'all's. So if y'all going to sit up here and talk shit about him, let him come on the show and defend himself. Because at the end of the day, y'all doing all of this, but regardless of what his relationship was with Tracy, y'all relationship with Tracy really wasn't all that either. Y'all treated her like shit most of the time. And he was the one backing her up when y'all wasn't. Okay. So we don't know what their relationship went through. We don't really know what happened or what went down. But y'all are trying to keep him from telling his side of the story when y'all sitting up here defaming him. No, I feel like as wrong as he is, he has a right to come up here and tell his side of the story. Y'all talking about him. I don't think it's fair for y'all to talk about him and then y'all not let him do a scene with his own son. No. Talking about y'all don't want to give him a platform. Y'all got a platform to talk shit about him. So what, what's really going on? So I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But it is what it is. And that's it for this review. I know this review was a little shorter than the very first one. But like I said, a lot uh, there was a lot that did not happen in these two episodes. So I knew I was going to wrap this up within a 25-minute radius um, or whatnot. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed the review and all those things. Now, before we go, as you all know, the Boss Babe Awards is next year, and they're already doing their vetting process for the nominees. And they're asking you guys on their Instagram, who do you think should be nominated? So for me, um, when you tag my name in the comment section, tag me for a content creator, YouTuber, as well as media blog. And also for the podcast category, you have to tag myself, Jamar, give you the real tea, Tramel, Carl, and Jeremy Speaks, and put podcast next to the names. Okay, so I'm going to do a video 
that Josiah would edit. I'm going to put it at the very beginning of the videos from this point forward. And um, y'all know what to do. I'm going to put the link to the actual post so you guys can tag us all in it at the bottom of the video. And, it's, and also, for Boss Babe performance and Boss Babe artistry, make sure you guys tag Bando, Carl, and Tramiel for that as well. All right? So with that being said, this is your boy, Scotty by Nature TV. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, share this video, and also click on the notification bell so you can be notified whenever a video drops. And if you want to follow me on any form of social media, on my Twitter, my Instagram, and my TikTok will be down below. With that being said, you guys, I am out of here, and I will leave you guys with Bando in the London. Don't sweat me. I'm out of here, y'all. Bye. Don't shake your ass, booty acting up. Don't grab your drinks, let me pass the Dutch. Damn shorty bad, looking bad as fuck. Don't sweat it. Ain't no competition, I've said it. Don't exist to the beef, motherfucker, I did it. Pull up, knock your coins like Mario. Couldn't slip me do 100 miles of cardio. Damn. You niggas stay faking, you niggas stay hating, you niggas so basic. You felt the wind, so don't test me, nigga. My team will leave the weapons, Joe Pesci, nigga. The haters send me win, so I cause them frustration. Haters hear my name, so I give them a trade. Bro, running this race on you fucking lanes. Spin the block, get both, bitch, suck it, chain. Bam. Don't sweat, 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 don't swe